It's Paul Joseph Watson with Infowars.com, and I'm delighted to be joined by Sheila Martin, who goes by the YouTube name Sheila Aliens. And Sheila's YouTube channel, which has a staggering 25 million views, is a uh, cornucopia of deliciously weird and mysterious subjects, a few of which we're going to touch on today. Sheila, welcome to the show. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. So, just to begin, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into all these bizarre subjects that are the subject of your YouTube channel, uh, and the secret behind your 25 million plus viewer success. Okay, well, ever since I was a child, I've been interested in all things paranormal, ghosts, and stuff like that. When I was about 18 or 19, for reasons unknown to me, I became interested in UFOs. I started hunting UFOs. Um, I started uploading my own UFO videos, like I have hundreds of them. And then after that I kind of branched off into just all types of conspiracy theories and weird happenings. And I just gained a following somewhere along the way. As far as my view count, I just have a knack for finding things that I guess go viral. And I just post what interests me and it happens to interest a lot of other people too at the same time. So I guess it's just the, the mystery of the unexplained. I mean, even though in a lot of the cases of the subjects that we're going to talk about, the answers remain elusive, they continually fascinate people simply because they're weird and bizarre and a bit different to their everyday life, I guess. Is that what you'd say? Yeah, I'm not sure what the fascination is with the unknown, but people really prefer a mystery to even knowing the truth. Because I will often post a video saying what I think is the likely more reasonable explanation for what happened and they don't care half as much about that as they do about the subject when it was still a mystery so I don't know what the allure is but people are interested in the unknown and it's something to talk about something fun to discuss with each other I think that's why they find it so interesting and something that you've been focusing on recently as have I is these reports of mysterious booms plaguing Wisconsin uh, obviously, a, a few months ago, there's been recent reports that they've come back again. Last week, we had similar reports out of New Jersey with residents there experiencing the same thing. And, of course, the official explanation was that it was caused by a swarm of earthquakes, mini earthquakes, even though, of course, Wisconsin is a geologically in inactive area, largely. And basically, nobody believed the explanation, did they? So what do you think is the most likely explanation behind these booms and what people have been experiencing? Well, there's different booms for different places, I think. But with Wisconsin, the official story was not that it was a fault line earthquake, but it was something to do with the type of ground, and it was thawing out or something weird. But the booms from the description sounded like um, man-made booms, like Somebody is either maybe fracking or mining for gold, because there's a lot of gold recently discovered in the ground of Wisconsin, and maybe they're just covertly mining for gold. They don't want to tell anybody. Or it could be the underground bunkers that people like to insist are happening. So any of those seems more plausible than earthquake. I mean, that's kind of an insult to our intelligence, considering it was a one-point-whatever earthquake in you know, there's not an earthquake to account for every boom. So that's just kind of an insult to our intelligence. Well, the thing about it was the residents in Wisconsin, in Clintonville and other areas reported the booms before the USGS said the earthquake happened. So how yeah. can the boom, if the boom's caused by the earthquake, how can it precede the earthquake? I mean, that's when you say insulting our intelligence, that's why most people didn't believe them. But again, as you said, 1.5. When I read what seismologists said about a 1.5 earthquake, they said that was so minuscule it would be felt faintly by people across one block, whereas this, these booms in Clintonville were being felt across whole areas of the town. Isn't that the case? Yep, they're audible too, so I don't know. It's not, definitely not earthquakes in my opinion. Um, as to what they really are is, I guess, anybody's guess. I was hoping that, like, um, somebody would send a reporter out there to try to find out. I mean, there's some audio of it. it. sounded like somebody had blown up some dynamite, if you ask me. So, it's all very fishy to me. Of course, CO2 sequestration, that's 
also known to cause man-made earthquakes. But, you know, the USGS just came along and said, yeah, swarm of earthquakes, doesn't matter that they happened after the booms, forget about that, let's just move on. And I, put, I did a video on this a um, few days ago, just hundreds and hundreds of comments from people across the United States reporting the same thing. So it's not just restricted to, you know, Wisconsin, New Jersey, it's across the whole country. And on a related subject, we've got these weird reports of bubbling swamps. Tell us about those. Uh, that's happening in Louisiana, a place called Bayou Corn. They're having, well, I guess swamp gas is a fairly normal thing, but they're having a lot more than normal and in different places where it's not usually happening. But along with the bubbling, people are getting, their houses are rumbling, like the foundations are being shook. And this is in like between May and July, it's been happening. I saw a recent report that said that it might be due to an underground well, but it was completely inconclusive, and I doubt that's what it is. I mean, it could be geological activity, maybe some type of volcanic something or other happening, so. And what, didn't they rule out, like, gas valves and all that kind of stuff? That was ruled out, wasn't it? Yeah, they ruled out all that, all the normal things that it would be, and they actually issued a voluntary evacuation of that area. You know, what's the point of that? I have no idea. But yeah, it's getting pretty weird over there. Makes you wonder. And in Missouri, they've had loud booms too. I've actually found some police audio from the 8th of July where they're talking about a boom going on. So. There's some booms going on behind you. <laughs> you said that's thunder, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's monsoon season in Tucson, Arizona, so. Oh, really? Yeah. They're separating the booms out because there's another issue that's kind of riding on its coattails, and that is the, the strange sounds coming from the sky. YouTube, over the past 18 months, has been saturated with these videos about people recording, you know, everything from groans to trumpets. From what I could understand, a lot of it was the same audio clip played over and over again, but put to a different video. There, there's obviously a lot of fakes out there, and a lot of them are taken from this movie in which, you know, it's like a Christian cult or whatever, and they're waiting for the end of the world. So they've lifted the audio from this movie and put it on random videos and called it, you know, strange sounds coming from the sky. Um, it's mostly fake from my viewpoint, but... What do you, what's your take? Is it end of the world hysteria or is there something genuine behind it? I don't think there's much genuine behind the strange noises from the sky as far as trumpets and the weird metallic grinding noises. Um, those are definitely hoaxes. It started with Kiev or however you pronounce it. It's a place in Russia. I fell for it when it happened in 2011. They posted a video. It has like a million views or something. It has the really weird sound that everybody yanked the audio from and started making additional hoax videos. And you can, you know, you can hear the same bird and then the same sound. But if you look up an instrument called a water phone, it actually makes the same noises. It's a really strange in instrument, and it probably that's probably what they used. So we're calling a hoax on that, but the booms. You know, yeah, you have to separate the two issues because they've been independently documented by experts, not just the USGS who said there were earthquakes, but also by independent audio engineers, which ties into the next question, which is, I like the fact that on a lot of your videos, you remain skeptical. You offer, you know, down-to-earth explanations for a lot of it. Because as you know, with these kind of subjects, there's so much noise that the you know, the really important and real stuff often gets buried amidst all the hoaxes and the stuff that's basically impossible to nail down. So how, how do you avoid going down these rabbit holes of the, the fakes and the hoaxes and how do you hone in, you know, laser-like on what's really important? Um, I just have, like, a desire to know the absolute truth. Like, when I started out, I just started from scratch and I did go down some rabbit holes and I still have my old videos where I got things wrong or I got too excited about something, but I leave them up because it shows me where I came from. But I just evolved. Like, you have to evolve eventually. You know, you can't keep being that way and being so naive. I mean, not everything is something crazy like you want to think it is. I mean, because you need to realize there are weird things happening on this planet and you're not ever going to find out about them if you're too busy chasing regular stuff thinking it's something else. 
So I just, I don't know, I just don't deal with any bullshit. Pardon my language. 